Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels, and we're going back to the horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do, I just wanted to speak a little bit of my piece. So there are some of you on Twitter in regards to the new movie AH Got In via ILBE Group and that supernatural thriller that are just kind of nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Calm down, guys. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. There, there could be an in on this. Let me be blunt with you. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit if there is the best intentions in the world. I don't care if Johnny knows about it or not. I don't care. What I care about What I always care about is, once again, as though the movie industry learned nothing from the SIA situation, the Hollywood people, the producers, whatever is going on, is once again, once again, using autism. And they are using it in a horrible way. When you make your premise based on an autistic child in the 1800s and you're going to use that word, autistic, and then you're going to tell me that the premise is that this psychiatrist, by the way, the fact that you're sitting there, psychiatrist, 1800s, a woman, fucking please. I'm not a misogynist, but I am someone who is a history fan and fucking really. And then you're going to tell me she's going to accurately diagnose him as autism, which is bullshit. That diagnosis didn't even come out until the 30s and 40s. And then you're going to tell me the villagers think he's demonically possessed. And then he really is demonically possessed. You're doing a lot of things. You are demonizing autistic people. And you are dehumanizing autistic people. And we are fucking done. Done. You hear me? And then to top it all off, you're going to send that fucking psychotic bitch as the person that's going to come out and cure us? So you're going to push cure culture on top of it? And you think I'm going to keep my mouth shut and wait? Nah. I'm afraid I can't do that. I'm afraid I can't stand back and wait. I will not. It's unfucking acceptable. Period. And I will speak out on it. Uh, right, sorry, rant over. We're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC, but before we get started, a few of the usual disclaimers. First off, you are going to see the link to this report right there in the description box, alongside the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, the templates, and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. When we talk about the JRC folks, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of peoples with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you've got young children present, please use your headphones. And it is 406, oh, folks, 406. And it's been back-to-back since I first jumped on the phones at 8 a.m. this morning. So if I stumble over my words, my apologies in advance, all right? So we're going to page 32. 8.12 IEP Transition Services. Oh, you're going to tell me more garbage about how it's implemented, but, you know, you do no follow-ups? Okay. Let's see how it goes. Is my tea cool yet? (laughs) For students approaching graduation of the age of 22, the private school's participant on the IEP team will provide sufficient information to the team to enable the team to determine whether the student is likely to require continuing services from adult human service agencies. Oh, for fuck's sake. You really going to put the power in their hands to decide whether or not you all get to make more fucking money off of them? Of course you are. 
The private or public school may make the referral to the Bureau of Transitional Planning in the Executive Office of Health and Human Services at least two years prior to the student's 22nd birthday in accordance with requirements of MGL. Okay, so what you're telling me is the transition services that you do offer is their care in regards to what home you want to fucking stick them in after they leave that hellhole. Gotcha. Criterion number 9.1, Policy and Procedures. The program develops a comprehensive set of policies and procedures dealing with the discipline and behavior management that meet all federal education requirements and all applicable state and federal requirements pertaining to the use of restraint, see criterion 94 below. These policies and procedures are consistently implemented. Implemented, response required now. Oh, so you're telling me that them using restraint as punishment is okay. You're telling me, well, if that's not abuse, that's not torture, that's to protect others from behaviors. Mm -hmm. Did you not see that where they said they use it as punishment? So they could be literally not having a real behavior, literally be moving their hand like this. And as long as somebody calls it behavior, they can fucking strap them up and leave them there for days fucking on end, as we have heard they have done, or hours, with no food, no bathroom breaks, but that, that's all hunky dory to you. Really? Really? Department of Education Findings 9.2 Discipline Code. The private special education program develops and implements a student discipline code of conduct. Yeah, you call that a code of conduct? I, I call it an excuse to brutalize people. 9.3 Runaway Students. The program shall have a written policy including definition of runaways appropriate for the school population and location as well as procedures for handling students who run away. These policies must be approved by the Department of Education. The school must notify the department, the local school district, and other involved agencies and parents immediately whenever any student runs away. Okay, so you have all the fail safes possible when a student wants to get away from your fucking horror show. But if a student wants to report real abuse, you're going to sit there and say, oh, no, but it's part of your plan. You're, it's your treatment. We're doing what's best for you. You just take your punishment and keep your mouth fucking shut. We're going to shock you and beat you and destroy you and take away all your autonomy in any sense of self. And there's nothing you can do about it. Fantastic. Thank you for addressing the issues. 9.4 Restraints. A private day educational program must develop a policy on the use of restraint and administer physical restraint in accordance with the requirements of 603 CMR 46. A residential educational program and any day educational program operated by a residential program must comply with the DEEC restraint requirements contained in 102 CMR 3 for all students enrolled in such program. A private school education program within a program or facility subject to MGIC 123 or the Department of Mental Health Regulations must comply with the restraint requirements of MGI 123, 104, CMR 27.12, or 104, CMR 28.05 where applicable. Implemented response required? Yes. Okay, common. The school has approved the restraint policy from the Department of Early Education and Care. The school must update the department if there are any changes to the approved policy. Oh, like they're going to do that. Additionally, a review of documentation, staff interviews, and student records indicate that the school uses adversive treatments that are specifically authorized by the probate court orders. And that makes it fine, right? But if they're court ordered to torture the students, then it's perfectly fine. Let's not take into, you know, at, let's not take into our heads here that a starving student performs at a lesser level than a student on a full stomach when in an educational setup. Let's not discuss the fact that a student not daily being fucking tortured is going to perform at a higher level than a student that fucking fears letting out so much as a cough in the wrong direction. God, I hate people.
9.5, three to five days suspensions. Oh, you mean vacations? Upon admission of a student, the private special education program shall provide a written policy on suspensions to the parents and to the school district and human service agency that placed the student. Such policy shall also contain the following information. Wherever a student is suspended, the school shall immediately notify parents and the public school or human service agency responsible for the placement. Within 24 hours, the school shall send a written statement explaining the reasons for the suspension to the parents in the public in the public school district. No student may be suspended and sent home unless a responsible adult is available to receive the student. Once a student has been suspended for three consecutive school days or five non-consecutive school days in a school year, the school parents and the public school district consistent with federal requirements shall explore together all possible program modifications within the school and in all attempt to prevent more lengthy suspension of the student from the program. So we're going to sit together and figure out what new punishments and horrors we can bring upon this child to bring them in line. Sick fucks. Procedures must be in place to record and track the number and duration of suspensions, including suspensions from any part of the student's IEP program, including transportation. Note, sending a student home early is considered a suspension if the student's IEP does not allow for modification of the learning time requirements of the Board of Education. Implemented? Response, no. So remember what they use the suspensions for. That's when the students refuse to bow down. That's when the students go and tell someone. They either get punished or they get suspended and their angry parents who have drank the Kool-Aid. Yeah, you can guess what happens there, can't you? So... We've read some interesting smoke up our ass, and Massachusetts just seems to back everything this school does and say it's okay because the judge says it's okay. It's ridiculous, folks. The fact that this is legal is fucking insane. How anyone could see this and not think it was insane and inhumane, I do not understand. I just don't understand on what fucking planet. Anybody can read through all the shit that we have and declare that everything's okay because the court orders it. Did we learn nothing from Salem? Now on that note, I'm going to close out, folks. We don't get very many views on this channel. And the few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So, folks, please don't forget to hit that like button. Hit subscribe. And don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time this evening. As always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.